Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that this is another day, another opportunity that the Lord has has saw fit to give us another chance to get it right with him. And I'm just so thankful for his grace and his mercy. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Even in the midst of all these things that are going on, God is still good. We have sickness, we have death all around us, but God is still good. Amen. I, I ask and solicit your prayers for the sick and, and the shut in and those who are in bereavement. I, I do send a special request out that we pray for the Nails family um, and the passing of Sister Dean and pray for the strength of the family during their time because it can be their time now. It can be so quickly our time tomorrow. Amen. When we get news, you um, recently passed on yesterday morning and um, we're praying for the strength of the family and um, arrangements will be made um, later, amen. But we are praying for the family. We ask that you pray for their strength and, and Deacon Lawyer as well. We just pray for his strength as well in going through this time, amen. We um, do want to conclude to today the weapons of our warfare, amen. A lot of comments about um, I ended it too too quickly and too soon, but um, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have the people coming back wanting more. When Jesus taught, he always taught in parables and questions. When he when he asked, you you have them, you you leave them thinking, and then wanting them to come back for more. Amen. So we have four more weapons that we want to discuss, and we're going to get into that right after you join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good. Thank you for being our God, our Father, our loving, kind, caring parent. Thank you, Father. We pray um, for the sick and the shut-in. We pray for the poor in spirit. We pray for those in bereavement. We pray for the Nails family at this time that you strengthen them, not only the Nails family, but all families who are seeking comfort and, and needing your consolation at this time. Strengthen them and encourage them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, continue to bless those who are who are trying to do your will, living the best they can. Continue to encourage those and motivate them to do whatever you have said and spoken in your word. And Father, continue to bless this ministry. We just thank you for all that you're doing. Continue to bless us as we go forth to do your will and not our will. Bless your word, Father, and bless the hearers and the doers of your word. These and other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Now for the conclusion of the weapons of our warfare. I hope you enjoy. What's another weapon that's in our spiritual warfare? Well, how about the blood of Jesus? In Revelation 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. See, when Jesus shed his blood, it conquered all sin. When Jesus shed his blood, it conquered all death. When Jesus shed his blood, it conquered all disease and every other thing. We need to learn how to plead the blood of Jesus. We need to plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. We need to plead the blood of Jesus over our family. We need to plead the blood of Jesus over our future. See, because the devil can't pass or cross the bloodline. The devil cannot cross the bloodline. When Jesus put that bloodline in the sand, the enemy cannot cross it. I, I need to call on a witness. Let me call on Moses. Mo Moses says, when God sent me back into Egypt to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He said, I'm going to send some plagues down there for Pharaoh to let my people go. God sent nine plagues and Pharaoh always changed his mind. But God told Moses this next plague, Pharaoh will surely let my people go. So God was going to send the death angel down there. 
and he was going to wipe out the firstborn all through Egypt. But God told Moses, he said, I want you to get a lamb without stock or without blemish. And I want you to kill it and get the blood out of it. And when you get the blood out of it, I want you to put it on the lintels of the door. And when the death angel comes to the land of Egypt, the death angel is going to pass over the houses that's covered with blood. Y'all missed that tonight. Some of you are sitting in here tonight because you were covered in the blood. The car wreck didn't take you out because you were covered by the blood of Jesus. The disease didn't kill you because you were covered by the blood. When you were young and foolish going to the club, the gunshot didn't kill you because you were covered by the blood of Jesus. What can wash all my sins away? But the blood of what can make me whole again? Nothing. Oh, how precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. And there's something about this blood. It'll never. Lose his power. Yeah. So now we have the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now we have the blood of Jesus. Yeah. But what's another weapon? It's the word of God. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 17 says, The sword of the spirit yeah. is the word of God. Yeah. We have a powerful weapon in the word of God. Yeah. And the reason it's so powerful is because the word cannot fail. Yeah. Isaiah 55 and 11, God said, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I set it. Hebrews 12 and 4 said, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. David said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. David said that your word is a lamp upon my feet and a light upon my pathway. When you use the word of God against the devil, you'll get immediate results. Can I get a witness in here? Faith in God's word will move any mountain. Faith in God's word will slay any giant. And faith in God's word will defeat every enemy. See, and that's why you got to have some word down on the inside of it. Ain't my Lord all right? Amen. So we have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the word of God. And next we have prayer and fasting. Matthew 17 tells us that Jesus took Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he told them to stay here and I'm going over here and pray a little while. And while Jesus went to pray, the Bible says that he was transfigured. The clothing that he wore all of a sudden began to glow. And there were two fellows that showed up with him. One was Moses and the other one was Elijah. Amen. Moses represented the law. And Elijah represented the prophets. And Jesus was there talking with them. And the gospel according to Luke tells us that Moses and Elijah was telling Jesus and preparing him for what death that he was going to have to go through. And when Peter woke up from his sleep, he said, it's good for us to be here. Let us make a tabernacle for each one of y'all. Jesus said, no, it's not yet time to tell anybody this. But there was something happening down at the base of the mountain. 
The Bible said that the other nine disciples were down there and when Jesus got down there, the father of a son went to Jesus and said, I brought my son to your disciples and they couldn't do anything with it. He's a lunatic. He throws himself in the fire and he throws himself in the water and he, and he convulses and he does all this, but your disciples couldn't do anything. And Jesus said, bring him to me. And the man asked Jesus, he said, he said, he said, Master, heal my unbelief. Jesus said, bring him to me. And he told him to leave him. And when Jesus told the demon to leave him, the boy shook a little bit, but the demon had to go. The disciples went a little further with Jesus, and they said, now why couldn't we do this? Jesus said, oh, you little, you have little faith. Jesus said, you got to believe that you can do this, but Jesus went a little further, but that was a tough demon there. And those kind right there only come out by prayer. I'm glad I got some Bible readers in here. Amen. Every once in a while, you need something stronger than to get rid of some of these little headache demons. Because there are some demons that are locked jaws with you and won't let you go. I don't care how much oil you slap on you. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care. But it takes a little bit more that you have to do. Jesus said, besides pray, you need to learn to give up the plate. See that group right there mad with me now. <laughs> Pastor, you telling me, I, I pray, I pray. I go in my secret closet, I pray. But you're telling me I need to give up that pork chop? Yeah, you need to give up that pork chop. <laughs> See, I told you, they didn't got an attitude with me. Amen, amen. Fasting don't only include food, but fasting could include television also. Sometimes you need to turn off the young and the restless and have a little talk with Jesus. See, now that side man with me. Yeah, you're going to have to turn off Queen Sugar sometimes. You're going to have to turn off power sometime. Amen, somebody. Not only lose food, not only you need mean television, fasting also means the phone sometimes. Deke, I just lost everybody. Not only turn down food, but sometimes you have to get off the telephone. I mean, the telephone. Tell Sister Sue, I can't talk to you now. I need to talk to Jesus. Yeah, they ain't got all, okay, pass. I, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I, I can give up food and I can give up television. And yes, yes, I can, I can do that. I can get off the telephone. But you also need to give up Facebook also. <laughs> See, I just lost everybody back here. Man. So I think we done covered the whole church, right? If you want some strong demons to get out of your life, not only pray, but learn to give up some things sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because you might get weak in your flesh, but I promise you, you'll be strong in your spirit. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, he said, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. You have to learn to push the plate back and still pray on to Jesus. Amen. So we have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the word of God. We have prayer and fasting. And the last weapon that we have is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive power. You shall receive power. 
Now, now wait, wait till this adverb come up. After. The Holy Ghost come upon you. You shall receive power after. The Holy Ghost come upon you. A lot of soldiers feel like they're ready to fight when they enlist. But before Uncle Sam send you out there to fight, you got to go through basic training. And in going through basic training, then you receive your weapon. Now wait, watch this. But still, before you go on the battlefield, you're trained to use your weapon. So Jesus is telling us here, don't do anything, but just stay in training until the power come down. Can I get a witness in here? See, Jesus told his disciples, he said not to do anything until you receive power. Because he knew that the enemy had supernatural powers and it would take the power stronger than that to defeat him. Well, what kind of power does the Holy Ghost provide? Well, the Holy Ghost provides power to be a witness for Jesus. Power to go on when you feel like giving up. Power to love when you want to hate. Power to stand when you feel like falling. Power to speak life into dead situations. He dwells in us to remind us that we have power to fight against the powers of the devil. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. I know tonight that I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I know who my commander in chief is. Some of you may ask, well, who is your commander in chief? Well, the hymn writer said it best when he said that God sent his son. And they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my part. An empty grave is there to prove that my Savior lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. And life is worth the living. Just because I know my Savior lives. Is there anybody here who's in the army of the Lord? Can you say yes? And as long as I live, I'm going to continue to praise him for equipping me with the weapons of my warfare. Ain't the Lord all right? So Carlisle, how did he equip you? I heard that he came through 42 generations just to equip a young soldier like me. I heard he was born in Bethlehem. I heard he was raised in the way of the Lord. I heard at 12 years old, he went into the temple for the first time. And the doctors and lawyers were amazed at him. And one of them said, little boy, how old are you? He said, on my mother's side, I'm 12 years old. But on my father's side, I'm from everlasting to everlasting. On my mother's side, I get hungry every now and then. But on my father's side, I'm bred in a starving land. Say yes, say yes. On my mother's side, I get sick every now and then. But on my father's side, I'm a doctor in your sick room. Say yes. 
He kept on growing. And at 30 years old, he was baptized in the River Jordan. And when he came out of that water, the Holy Ghost came on him and descended like a dove. And the heavens opened up. And God said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Say yes. Say yes. I heard he was led in the wilderness. Fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Tempted of Satan three times. But he came out of that wilderness with power in his hands. Gave sight to blind eyes. Made deaf ears to hear again. Made lame legs walk again. Say yes. Say yes. Heal the sick and raise the dead. But I heard early one morning they put an old rugged cross on his back. Marching up Donald Arthur's hill. I heard at the top of that hill put nails in his hands. Put nails in his feet. Hung him high. Stretched him wide. And somewhere around the ninth hour he died. He died, y'all. I heard that they took him down. Laid him in a borrowed tomb. The reason it was a borrowed tomb. He wouldn't need it long and give it right back. Say yes. Say yes. Stay dead the first day. Stay dead the second night. But early, early, early on Sunday morning, he got up. why y'all I'm gonna praise him because he died for me I'm gonna praise him as long as blood running warm and some of you sitting there like you don't have anything to praise him for I got five reasons why you need to praise him reason number one he woke you up this morning reason number two he woke you up this morning reason number three he woke you up this morning. Reason number four. He woke you up this morning. Reason number five. He woke Amen. you up. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you should be ready to want to go out there and fight now, not flesh and blood. Cause I better make that clear because some of y'all, some of y'all say like, Pastor said it's okay for it. No, no. I'm talking about the evils of this world. You know that you have, you are thoroughly equipped with the proper weapons, you just have to know how to use them and you have to know what kind of armor you have on. Okay, so don't go out there saying, Pastor told me to knock you out. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> Amen. But I thank you. Uh, I hope that you share this word with somebody. Share this word with somebody. Let them know that God doesn't leave us out there defenseless or offensiveless. Um, we have weapons. We have protection over us um being being a follower of christ don't make you a wimp and don't make you this little doormat for some people as some people may think amen when jesus got got tired got sick and tired of being sick and tired when he had gone back in jerusalem and saw them in the temple jesus went in there and and one gospel writer said he made a whip now he went in there tearing stuff up running them out of there and say that my father's house shall be a house of prayer, but you've turned it into a den of thieves. And, you know, he, he Jesus wasn't no wimp. So don't ever think that Christ is some kind of little pushover or something like that. No, Jesus knew how to fight and he knew what to fight with. Amen. So share this word with brothers and sisters. I thank you so much for your continued support of this 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 channel and of this ministry amen especially in the areas of finances how you continue to give even though we're not meeting at the house you know that it is it is uh, an obligation to give amen to the ministry um or or to give to god we all have our portion to play in this and we just thank you for that miss but you continue to do this and we thank god for you um and we thank God for our covenant partners. But for those who do the drive-by, 
the trustee committee will be there again on January 22nd. That's Saturday, January 22nd at 10 a.m. So um, whatever you're going to do for the Lord, come on, drive by, drop off those who didn't come by and speak on this Saturday. Do a drive by. Happy New Year. Amen. So do what you're supposed to do. Um, when we when when the Lord says, let's open back up and let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to do that. We're going to follow what the Lord said. We're going to follow his lead. But for now, how things look with numbers going up and and um, higher than last year, you know, we want to use a sound mind. OK, we want to use good judgment when we when we do what the Lord wants to do. Amen. So um, Saturday, January 22nd at 10 a.m. That's when the trustee committee will be back at the church. Um, and for our covenant partners, you know that address and mail it in. Thank you so much for sharing what God has given you, sharing into this ministry. That address is Mispa Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. That's Mispa Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. I've enjoyed um, this word and enjoyed sharing it with you. So um, I'm going to remind you, you know, keep our, our sick and our shut in in prayer. Also, um, keep our families in bereavement and remember, you know, call the Nails family out by name. Um, at the passing of Sister Dean, um, please do this and um, just keep keep all of them in prayer. Keep our leadership in prayer um, for this in this country and and across the road across the world. Keep them in prayer. Um, when you go out, make sure make sure that you are masked up and and staying safe. If you go out, if you don't have to, stay at home. Whether you're vaccinated or not, okay? If you don't have to go out, you know, you stay at home. And you ain't got to prove anything to anybody. Yeah, you know, and it's not a testing of your faith. If you wear a mask or if you don't wear a mask and stuff like that. No, it is a testing of your mentality. That's what it is. You be safe. Okay, you be safe. Don't let anybody shame you into getting sick and dying. Amen. So you be safe. Do what you're supposed to do. Do those three W's, wear your mask, watch your distance, and wash your hands. You do those three things and you'll be all right, okay? I love all of you. I love all of you. Keep me in prayer. Call me out by name. And so until we find out what the Lord has for us next time, I want you to take care of yourself and each other. God bless you.